All right, so for today's uh, lesson, I'm going to write some notes here, and then we're going to start coding as usual. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, move into what is known as uh, rapid development, a quicker way to create the projects we wish to. So last time, we created a very basic HTML project put in a little bit of basic CSS, did a very little bit of basic JavaScript. But if you had never worked with those languages before, you accomplished relatively a lot. Now that is the tip of the tip of the iceberg of a web project or an app, what we did last time. And what I want to do is create an app that has a login screen, uh, a way to save the inventory, a way to retrieve a picture in the database. Well, behind the scenes, a lot is going to happen. But in the front end, on the front of things, there are buttons that we're going to press, menus that we will open, an interface that we will work with, and that also has to be programmed. So we're going to do this in a more rapid way than, uh, than the raw coding by using a library or framework as a template to create an interface quickly. There are many ways to uh, create an interface quickly in a project, and the one we're going to focus on uh, at the moment is called jQuery Mobile. There's a bunch of other ones. Sencha, um, Ionic, um, what else? Um, a bunch of other ones. There's a bunch of ways to quickly create an interface. And the interface are the buttons, and where is the menu, and how does a pop-up work, and stuff like that. We still need to program how does the login and logout system work? How does the database work? Uh, how do we save or retrieve data? We still need to program all of that, but at the very least, we have sort of a shortcut in creating the look of it by using these various frameworks. Uh, okay, I just one. So what we're going to do then is uh, get into some coding with jQuery Mobile, which is a library, a framework. It's a shortcut. So we could say it in these various ways. A shortcut, um, a template to create an interface quickly. So let's start up our uh, notepad coding app. Let's create a new folder to work with today's code and we're going to save a new HTML a new blank HTML file into that folder so um, on my flash drive I'm going to create a new folder for today's work so I forgot to mention last time but definitely you want to bring a flash drive or some other sort of storage because these computers whenever you turn them off they erase and everything that you've saved onto them will probably be gone if the computer gets restarted so you want to save your work take it with you I'm gonna make a new folder on my flash drive I'm gonna launch notepad plus plus save as today's date.html 
into the folder we just created. Um, new sign-in sheet. New sign-in sheet, OK. All right, so into our um, flash drive, we want to save our file. Question? Can you use our framework used for dragging as well as interface? Yeah, a framework is any sort of tool that you can use as a template or shortcut to either create a front end interface or a back end structure. So um, we're going to be focusing on a couple that I'm going to recommend for the class, but if you know anything besides that, you are free to use it. Okay, so saving my work here. .html. Now we will start off with a pretty uh, empty document for a moment. Uh, it'll be familiar like last time, but then we will be able to quickly. Uh, add upon it. So as usual here, we need to start up our first line of our document, which shows this is the doc type. This is the type of document we're working with. Um, the uh, exclamation point doc type, etc. And then HTML slash HTML, just like we did last time. We need a head block and a body block, like last time. And like I said, regarding tabs and enters and all of that, that's optional, but it's very nice and readable when you press tab and elements that are um, part of another element that they're tabbed in, that's nice and readable and that's helpful. Now, last time, then, we added a title to this project, and we will in a moment. But first, we also want to add what is our character set of this document. So here's one we didn't do last time. At, at approximately line 4, if yours are lining up with mine, that's fine. If they're not lining up, that's OK. But in the head block, we're going to add a new tag called a meta tag, M-E-T-A. This one does not have a pair. And this adds metadata to the document. This is adding data that is beyond uh, the regular confines of the document. And the point of this is we're going to set, we're going to define our character set. That's the fancy way of saying, like, what, what letters, what alphabet are we going to use? Now, maybe I'm making my app in English, so I want the regular English letters of the alphabet in, in English. Let's say I'm going to make my app in Spanish, and I want the characters in Spanish, you know, the accent marks. Well, maybe I want to make my, my app in Japanese, and I want the Japanese uh, letters, the Japanese characters. So this meta tag, we're going to add an attribute of char set. Some people would pronounce it char set. Those people would be wrong. It is pronounced car set, character set. Just kidding. You can pronounce it however you want. But this is a character set. Car set, char set, however you want to say it. Chair set. The set of characters we're going to use in this document will be defined here. So in theory, here I would say something like English. Don't type this. But let's say I want to use the English character set, or Japanese, or Spanish. Well, we're going to use a character set that basically encompasses them all. We will be able to use the letters and the alphabets in English, or Spanish, or Japanese, or Hebrew, etc. And that is by using the character set UTF-8. Short answer is that's all the letters. Short answer. Long answer is too long, so just type that. This is the character set that we're using in this app. And it would be a good idea to give ourselves a note. 
in HTML. How do we write notes in HTML? The thing, yes, like this, exactly. Yeah, uh -huh. exactly. The angle brackets, exclamation, dashes, mm -hmm. angle brackets. This is our character set, UTF-8, all the letters. We didn't set this last time. We didn't quite need it. But if you noticed, when you viewed your project, uh, I think it was either Chrome or Firefox, and we looked at the console, there was a scary warning that says, cannot understand character encoding. Well, that's what that was saying. It was saying, well, what characters are you using? The browser didn't quite know, because we never set it. When we set the character via the, via the meta tag here, then that eliminates that issue. What kind of document characters are we working with? After this, we'll add our title. It doesn't matter. Um, sometimes the underlining in Notepad++ is trying to give a warning for a misspelling. Like if I misspelled dog, it might underline it. And because it's inside of quotation marks, it might think that it is a real word, and it says it's misspelled. In this case, it's a false positive. So it is correct, like me, that I have the underline or not, if you typed it the same. Title, jQuery mobile practice. Yes. When you do a when you do a save as, you need to confirm that you've saved it as HTML. So um, the only new thing we've done here so far is uh, we've set this meta tag. Uh, I want to also uh, do, let's do this. Let's say uh, screen one home. Enter a couple of times. Screen two about. Enter a couple of times. Screen three, contact. The idea is I want to make a web project, a web app, or a mobile app. I want to make an app that has a home screen. And all the stuff about the home screen is there. Press a button, and I go view the about screen. Press a button, and I go view the contact screen. OK, so in my idea here, I want different screens with different content in the main body of the document. At this point, save it and run it to get the practice of our workflow. So you can hit the little Save icon on the top over here. And then you can go up to Run and Launch one of the, one of the browsers that you like. I'll go with Firefox, the first one. Run Firefox. And what I've got is the title appears up on the tab of the web browser, like I expected. But in the body, it is showing all three screens on one line in one screen. Now, I don't, I don't care about that. OK, they should have been broken into multiple lines. I don't care about that. I care about that. I want to see only the home screen on this screen. Press a button, go to the About screen. Press another button, go to the Contact screen. Well, that's where this framework comes in. Because traditionally, what you would have to do is you'd create a file called home.html. And all of the stuff on the home screen would be in that file. I would create another file called about.html, and another one called contact.html, and database.html. I would create a different file, a different HTML file for each different screen, traditionally. But by using this jQuery mobile framework that we're going to work with in a moment, we will actually be able to put all of those different screens in one file. 
So traditionally, uh, home HTML, about HTML, etc. So different files for different screens. A more modern approach. SPA, single page app, which is all your screens are in one file. Often requires a framework. A framework is shortcuts. A framework is a template. A framework is a quick starting point. You could, if you are, if you're very, very, very knowledgeable about these languages, you could create your own framework. You could create your own shortcuts and all of that. But there's a variety of them that already exist for solving these common issues. I want to create a project that has multiple screens that I can jump from screen to screen. Well, here it is: jQuery Mobile, or Sencha, or Ionic, or etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I want to create a, a project where I can quickly access a database and create different content and upload it. Uh, quickly, okay. Well, here's Angular, or here's Bootstrap, or whatever. Here's a bunch of different frameworks or starting points for your various tasks. So, what I want to do is separate each of these into their own screen. We just need to write the appropriate code related to jQuery Mobile that does that. In order for that jQuery Mobile code to be active, we need to basically connect to the the library. So let's go back up to the head block, right below slash head, or right before slash head. Give yourself a new line. You have meta title, new line, before slash head. I'm going to create another, meta, another tag here, so angle brackets, meta. Name, property. And content, I'm sorry, name attribute and content attribute. Up here we have the character set, the car set attribute of meta. Here we've got the name attribute and the content attribute. We're going to use jQuery Mobile to create various screens that look really nice, especially on a mobile device. Well, a mobile device has different needs than a big screen we need to make sure that our app grows or shrinks and responds and looks good on a small screen as well as as a big screen or a landscape screen or a portrait screen it needs to uh, respond to those sizes so we're gonna set a meta tag that deal that creates a mobile friendly design to your project we'll say here name viewport Content is initial dash scale one. I'll explain these in a moment. User comma space user dash scalable scalable equal to no, and then comma space width equals. This is where I it goes off the edge of the screen here. Sorry, I'll zoom out in a moment. Width equals device dash width this meta tag is defining the viewport basically the main visible area of the website the body basically we're saying the body of the of the website of the web app of the mobile app its content will have an initial scale of 1. Have you ever visited a website on your mobile device and the text is tiny? And you have to zoom in to even read it. Well, that website was not mobile friendly. We are making our projects mobile friendly. We're saying initial scale. The automatic zoom when the person first visits our, our project is 1 or 100 percent. The initial zoom is 100%. Initial scale, 100%. User scalable says no. So the person will not be able to zoom in or zoom out on our project. 
And that makes sense because if you're using, for example, Facebook or Instagram, you're not zooming in to the Instagram logo. You're not zooming in or out to look at the copyright date on Facebook. You can zoom in and out to a photo and such, which is another matter. But right here, by saying user scalable, no, we're not going to be able to zoom in and out of our app and break the illusion that it is a real app. Question. Well, so how does the device know that 100% is the size of an iPhone, the size of a screen, the size of a... How does it know? Third thing I was going to say, the width is now based on the device width. Here's how it knows. Because then it's going to make itself wide enough to fit the device that it is currently on, the third uh, value of the content uh, attribute. So these, uh, these three, separated by commas, create a mobile-friendly viewport. So we can make a note there. We can say mobile-friendly. No, just one, just no. one moment. One moment. Remember, raise your hand, please. Uh, mobile friendly uh, meta tag to set our viewport. Question. So when you use, use user scalable, no means that they cannot expand it. Is that what that? Well, if we're talking about expand and zoom, yes. You know how you can pin, you can pinch the fingers or unpinch. Yeah, that, that would be it. exactly. So this should, in theory, stretch out your web project to fit properly on any device, uh, landscape, or, or portrait, because it, it is zoomed 100%. It's stretched out to the device width. It does not allow the person to zoom in or out to break the design. Next line, we'll say here, comment. Link to a mobile friendly style sheet. CSS. When we wrote a little bit of basic CSS last time, we set a background color, we set text color, we set the size of a picture. Okay, we were playing with CSS. We were styling the document, we were creating a style sheet. Well, on a mobile device, um, I want a certain amount of empty space or border around the edges or a certain amount at the top so that it doesn't look so tight there. We want to style the project so that it looks nice on a mobile device. jQuery Mobile has a CSS file that we can use that will help us do that, that will resize the fonts properly and the colors and such. This one, however, is going to be a link. The tag is a link. It does not have a pair. It's just link. But it has two attributes, rel and href. Re or href sounds familiar. We had href when we made a when we made a hyperlink. When we linked back to my website, it was a tag, href equals VMC Inc. Well, here's a different kind of link. It's not the same kind of link like where you would click on a button to go to a website. Here we are creating a connection from our file to another file to load the jQuery Mobile framework to be able to use the jQuery Mobile shortcuts. Rel. The relationship between our file and the other file is that this is going to link to a style sheet. And just like last time, remember I said, well, if you were linking to a picture, victor.png or JPEG, and if it was in our folder, we would link to it. Well, the same thing here, let's say we're, we're linking to a file called colors.css. If that CSS file was in this folder, this would link to it. But there's going to be a file that's going to be on the internet somewhere. So it's going to be some address.com something. There's going to be a long address, and people will misspell it, but I'll type it slowly. And once you've got it typed right one time, then you can copy and paste it. It goes like this, https colon slash slash code jQuery 
jQuery.com. Now, this is a Q here. It's kind of cutting off, but it's jQuery. That's a J, not an I. jQuery.com slash mobile, mobile, slash 1.4.5, slash jQuery.mobile, dash 1.4.5. Dot min dot CSS. So yes, it, it has to be typed exactly like this. We will confirm in a moment if you typed it right or not. But basically, we're saying there's a style sheet we're linking to. Here is the hypertext reference to it. It's on the internet at jQuery.com website in this folder, this version, this file. Ultimately, it's linking to a file jQuery version 145.css on the internet. To confirm that that worked, here's how it looked before I connected to the CSS file. Here's how it looks after. Slightly different font. That's one way to confirm that you did it right. If your font looks like this, where it's got the, like the little uh, accent on the S right there, this is a serif font, and you look at it here, it doesn't have that little accent, that's the correct one. So the font should change if you type that properly. It is a long line, let me put that in there again. So just let's pause there, let's make sure that we're all at the same place before we go further, because it won't work if it doesn't work here. Anyone need a little help? Question? A little help? Okay, I'll be right there. What changed? Uh, the font should have changed. It went from one style to another.
So if you got this, if you got this working, this is one of three uh, libraries, one of three files we're going to connect to. On on the first time that we do this, it it is well we're going to need to type a, a detailed <coughs> command, but then after that it helps us then to create our projects a lot easier. So um, let's next uh, go down here after screen three before the end of body. Give yourself a couple of lines. I went to line 19, and then here we're going to write the script tag. Remember, all of this is lowercase unless I s mention otherwise. This one does have a pair, script and then slash script, so the angle brackets, so forth. It does have a pair. Last time when we wrote a little bit of script, it was a little bit of JavaScript, well, we wrote some JavaScript that worked, that we invented, that worked on this project. We can do the same thing like we did on line 10 and connect to a, the jQuery uh, mobile library so that we can use the, the shortcuts of what jQuery mobile is. And basically, the whole point of this, again, is I want to quickly be able to create different designs and interfaces for my project. The first step, though, is a little bit of setup. This needs an attribute. So inside of the first tag, you want your empty space there so we can add the attribute of SRC. So it is different than up here. We had href using SRC. When we made an image last time, that one was an image tag with an SRC attribute. So it's just differences that you have to memorize. What we're going to do here is to connect to another file online, HTTPS colon slash slash code dot jQuery dot com slash jQuery dash one dot eleven dot one dot min dot js that is a js JavaScript up here we connected to a CSS file you can go follow that link if you're curious and you'll see thousands of lines of code that are shortcuts for us to write advanced CSS. This link here, if you're curious, you can follow that link and also see thousands of lines of code that were already written for us that we can use as shortcuts to make our project. So we've, we're going to connect to a JavaScript file on the internet, jQuery.com, jQuery version 111.min.js. Next line, another script pair, another source. And here we can save ourselves a little bit of effort. If you copy the line from up here and paste it in here, but instead change it to JS, it'll work. 
what I'm saying is, up here we wrote code jQuery mobile 145 min.css. If you copy that line, except for the CSS part, and paste it into this new script source and end it with dot js, not dot css, not dot css, dot js, just dot js, that will work as well. So make sure that ends in dot js. To confirm this worked, this is also very subtle, but watch this. Before I connected to those two JavaScript files, this is how my code, my project looked. And then after I connected to them, now they, the colors are slightly different. It's a gray instead of white, and the text is a little closer to the corners of the screen. So if it looks like this, you've done it right. A, a, a slight gray background, and the text is very close to the edge. If it still looks like this, but the background's pure white, and there's a little bit of a border, you misspelled something. And you've got to double and triple check your spelling right here. All right, did that work for everyone? Do you have uh, what I've got so far? The difference is right here. If um, with that, if it doesn't work properly, your background is pure white. If it did work, it's a slight gray. All right. Anyone need a little help? Thank you. 
So, as we, as we type this, and especially if you might not have practice, it is very meticulous. It is very particular that you do have to type it perfectly right. See, that's the great thing about computers. They do what you tell them. But the bad thing is they do what you tell them. So if you didn't end your quote here, it say, great, no quote. So then it does what you told it, what you didn't tell it. So you want to make sure your code is correct. Now, it might be difficult to work when the code is so small, so if only there was a way to make your code big and readable. Well, there is, of course. So if you hold the Control key and then use the mouse scroll wheel, and you scroll up and down holding the Control key, you'll be able to zoom in and out, perhaps, to see it in a better, more visible view. You can also get to that by going to View Menu Zoom and selecting it that way. But it's very quick to just hold Control key and then scroll mouse, scroll wheel. You can zoom into your code. So notice what, what I do when I do the uh, coding. I'm uh, often zooming my whole screen like this. If you want to do this, this is a little different too. This is obviously, this is in Windows. Uh, and I think it depends on your computer. But if you press the window, if you hold the Windows key and press the plus on your keyboard, you also zoom in your whole screen or zoom out your whole screen. And on the Mac, you have ways to do that with accessibility that I have to remind myself how. But uh, if you can't quite see it, there are ways to zoom in. If you need it, uh, check with me because obviously you want to see your code. So here's what we've got so far. What's next is I said I wanted to create different uh, different screens for these that are labeled as screen one, screen two, screen three. Well, now that we've connected to the three required files, now we can do that. So the first one is I need to connect to the CSS file for the fonts and the colors and sizing and such. Then I need to connect to two JavaScript files. Um, the main jQuery library and then jQuery mobile. And it does matter in that order. So I'll make a note here. Yes? So, um, I know you said it reads from top to bottom, left to right. Mm -hmm. So, does it matter that your libraries for JavaScript are below the body on the screens? 
it does matter. Now, depending on what kind of project you're creating, uh, oftentimes when you learn about JavaScript and such, you will see both ways that it's at the top in the head or down below the body. The reason why it may be different top to bottom is depending on what kind of code you're writing because if you put your JavaScript libraries at the end, since it reads it from top to bottom, you may be trying to access content that doesn't exist in the HTML area before you load it into the, the JavaScript. So the way I'm doing it here is we confirm that all our HTML nodes are created first, and then we can manipulate them with JavaScript. It'll probably work OK if these are at the top first, but in teaching this class for several years, this seems to be the best way to do it. We first add the basic jQuery library, then the jQuery mobile library, in that order. If we put the jQuery code first, then the jQuery code, it probably won't work because, again, this all gets loaded into memory. Load our code from here to here, put this into the memory, then load this code. And this code might be referring to this code, so if it was backwards, it might not work. So the order does matter. OK, so the way that we will uh, separate these screens into different sections of our app is we're going to wrap the section tag around each one that I want to be a separate screen. So section slash section, this is going to be its own screen. Section slash section, this will be its own screen. And same thing for the third one. So I'm being very liberal here about spacing and tabbing and such because I believe it's very helpful, uh, for, especially for beginners, to see things spaced out with enter and all of that. People then ask, do I need an enter here and here and here? Unless I specify where you need spaces and all of that, it can be pretty loosey-goosey about where do I put a space, where do I put a tab. And here, I put an extra space to differentiate this section from this section. And I tabbed these over to show that they're part of that block. It would have worked just fine without the tab. But readability-wise, it's more readable tabbed. OK, cool. We've created different sections. We've connected to the jQuery libraries the jQuery mobile libraries. We've created different sections. The instructor says that's all we need for this to work. Great. Save it and run it. And let's see our result. Hey, wait a minute. I thought these were going to be in their own separate screens. They're still in the same screen. They're separated now into their own line, but they're still on the same screen. But we need one more thing. Section attribute data dash role equals page. The role of this section is to behave like a page, an independent screen uh, separated from the others. Now save it and run it, and what do you get? If you added this data role attribute to the section tag, you should only see the content of screen one. The other ones have been moved to their own screen. So now the content of screen one is in its own section. It's in its own page, <clears throat> separated. We're going to need to then create buttons and such to go to the other screens. And we'll do that in a moment. But let's uh, take our first break. If it works up to this point, if the fonts look like I expect, if you only see screen one, great, save your work. If it didn't, we'll do a little break. Take a break until 6.40, and we'll be back at 6.40.